So the question on a lot of people's mind after someone wins the tour or someone does really well, so for instance, Pugac has won the tour twice in a row. People like to compare to the past and say, would he have done better in Froome's era, Contador's era, et cetera, et cetera. And normally, in football, let's say, you just can't compare because different areas, et cetera, et cetera. However, in cycling, because of Pawadea and because it's all on Strava these days, you can actually compare and you can see, is Pogaccia better than Froome? Is he worse than Froome? And we can look at the numbers. So it was obviously Froome won, what, four Tour de France's. So there's a lot of different climbs we could look at. But the one, well, it was probably the first tour I really watched properly, but also the one where he really, like, got so many criticisms, except Mont Ventoux, bon but that's a bit long, so we're going to not look into that too much, um, was Pierre, La Pierre saint Montaigne in 2015, and he attacked with, like, 5k to go, dropped Quintana by a minute, Richie Port then dropped Quintana, Hessing a minute and a half later, Valverde two minutes down, and everyone was just like, Froome is doing seven watts per kilo. And there was so much speculation that actually they released the power numbers that Froome did, which are wrong, uh, or could be wrong. Uh, but we're going to see that comparison to Pogaccia in the third week of the tour, and we'll see what is going on. So first of all, we're just going to go over to Robert Hessink. Um, so Robert Hessink has the com on the, uh, on the climb, 1,600 grams, so strong but not bonkers considering it was a tailwind. Not actually maybe as high as you'd expect. I'd have expected maybe 16, 17, closer to 1,700. 409 watts, um, but we'll, we'll anyway, we'll, we'll just go over to his power file. He says he's 71 kilos, which probably is about right. Um, if we look at the full, the full climb is a bit annoying to find. Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because we know what he did. 409 watts, so 5.8 watts per kilo. And he attacked early on, so it was like basically not in the bunch, so no drafting. And at 20k an hour, 21k an hour, you do get a good draft. So I would suggest Chris Rooms at 6 watts per kilo. If we look at when he released the data, they said that the oval chain rings can be out by 6% because stages is a useless power meter and can't use uh, oval chain rings. He did 414 watts at 67.5 kilos. They say 5.8. I'd say probably wrong um, just because, well, maybe not too wrong because Hessink was out the front. But anyway, I'm going to say, considering he beat him by two minutes, let's conservatively say 6 watts per kilo, 5.9 watts per kilo for 40 minutes. This is in stage 10, so quite early on. The stage was really easy, like 260 normalized for these boys is like soft tap zone two. Like it really isn't hard. It's threshold's 400 watts, then upper zone two, upper zone two, so like the endurance zone, 300 watts. This is below that. So like it's literally zone two. Like it would be like me or you doing 200 normalized for three and a half hours, but with way better endurance. So basically it was a very easy stage is my point. And the best numbers they did was let's say, you know, six watts per kilo for 40 minutes, which is obviously very, very good. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, but when we look at the numbers produced now, there might be some might might, might be a uh, eye opening. So anyway, this is uh, stage 18 of the tour, and um, we because Pagatra uploads on Strava, we don't need to get pro cycling stats up. We can actually just get on the on the climb itself. The Luzardi Den um, here is the last climb of the day, 35 minutes ish. So not the same length climb, but similar ish, and we can see here uh, that Pagatra. Um, okay, he was about 30 seconds quicker than Kitep Kuz. Unfortunately, Carapaz didn't upload power data. Um, having, having said that, you get a pretty good idea. He did 6 watts per kilo, or 5.9 watts per kilo for the 36 minutes, and still finished 30 seconds down. And Bagatia, to be fair, had a decent amount left. All of these climbs in the Pyrenees, he didn't really go full. The Tourmalade, did, again, did a decent pace, 5.5 watts per kilo for 45 minutes or so. So again, pr a lot harder stage, third week, similar numbers, okay? Then we're going to go on to Richard Carapaz, Carapaz uh, my absolute hero, and we're going to look at his power data from the following stage, which is stage 19. And you can see, obviously, the first part, again, really easy, 246 normalized. But then this climb, Perisou, done at 5.5. Then you've got um, the Val Laurent Aze, which is done at 5.8 watts per kilo for 20 minutes. And then you look at the last climb, done at 6.1 watts per kilo for 49 minutes. And that is absolutely bonkers in comparison to what Chris Froome did. And I know you can't compare in a lot of ways because you could say the racing was harder, they had crosswinds early on, but stage 10, people were going mental that Chris Froome did 40 minutes at six watts per kilo. And this is what stage 19, uh, sorry, stage 18 it was, uh, the Col de Portet. He did 6.1 for 49 minutes. Didn't even win the stage. And like obviously attacked massively towards the end of the climb, whatever, like it was not a smooth climb while Froome, basically rode the perfect climb, like was sat in all day behind this, the team, 
one attack done. So numbers wise should be a lot higher than someone like this where you can see it's super low here, gets down to 156 watts and watts like 800 watts. But yeah, so in conclusion, is Tade Pigacha a better climber than Chris Froome? Numbers wise, it seems fairly conclusive that he is. Power meters might read slightly differently. Uh, but if we look at this VAM as well, 1700 VAM, okay, it's a steeper climb. When climbs are steeper, it's easier to get higher VAM. And obviously there's a tailwind, but then they said the VAM should have been higher. But then he got 1800 VAM here, so maybe, maybe you know, sometimes the segments are a little bit out. Um, all I'm going to say is this. I think the level now is significantly higher than what it was in 2015. I think that's also backed up by like Thomas Pigen saying he's bringing his best numbers out. And Tawad Van Avermaet saying the same. A lot of people are saying they're putting some of the best numbers they've ever done out and still not doing as well as they used to do. Which again, maybe you're like, oh, they're getting old. Um, but in my opinion, you know, 6.1 was per kilo for 49 minutes in the last week of the tour after like a hard stage before. 5.5 for 20, 5.8 for 20. Um, okay, maybe it's probably sub threshold for them, but that, that's still irrelevant. 3,500 kilojoules. I mean, that is a lot, lot, lot more impressive than what Chris Froome did back in the day. Um, so anyway, those are my points. I think Chris Froome, obviously, love the man, but I don't think he's as good as Tade Pigaccia. Time trialing, very hard to compare because I don't have any of their power data. So you're just going speculating on speed and speed now. They're obviously going quicker because they've got better position. So you're sort of like, if we had Pagacha back in 2015, then it's hard to compare. While climbing, okay, you can, like, you know, it's just what's the key. There's no real advantage in terms of te technology or anything. It's just who is faster up the climb. And obviously that's sports science and the rest of it, training. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a, it's a valid comparison where I think time trials is a bit bit pointless in my opinion, uh, just because the technology keeps getting better and better. And Chris Froome in top condition now, you know, who knows how fast he'd go. So anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.